Well, good Sunday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. This is the calm before the storm. We know the free agent frenzy. In fact, NFL Network starts today. The free agent frenzy um, coverage come Tuesday. Legal tampering begins, although we've already seen so much stuff that's already happened. You know, we've seen Derek Carr that's already moved. We've got Daniel Jones getting the same contract, basically, that Dak Prescott has. You've seen Tom Brady retire. We've seen, you know, teams trying to get um, – uh, Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers just playing it up and teasing it. You know, here it is. All Jets Nation is on pins and needles hoping that Aaron Rodgers is the guy that's going to come through and save him. We've seen Odell Beckham Jr. work out for 12 teams, Cowboys not being one of them. Um, just a lot that's been going on, and the league year hasn't even started until the 15th. So, you know, hold on to your hats, catch your breath today, and we're going to see if we're going to see. The thing that's always been sad for being a Dallas Cowboy YouTuber, in the past, you could pretty much take off the first couple of weeks of free agency. You just could. While other teams are making, you know, bang up trades and, you know, big signings and stuff, you know, where's this guy going to go and this guy's coming to town. We just kind of sit around like, who, you remember how crazy it was for the Eagles last year? Well, Jerry Jones seems to kind of say, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently this year. Now, so far, the only moves we have made is restructuring Dak and Zach Martin. That's it. We've talked to Dalton Schultz and made him a good offer, um, but apparently one that's not good enough. Um, we've talked about Leighton Van Der Esch probably being gone, as well as maybe Donovan Wilson, um, but maybe they're still trying to work out something. Um, we've heard that they are trying to redo Tyron Smith's contract and um, also come up with a new contract for Zeke possibly, which case would net the Cowboys more money. Everything else is all speculation. When we talk about Hopkins, of course, coming to Dallas working out with um, Des Bryant and saying, what's up, Cowboys? Or Micah Parsons, you know, to Calais Campbell, if you want that ring, come on here to Dallas. Or, you know, Jalen Ramsey, next stop. You know, those are things that are wish things that we all wish could happen. But we don't know if it's going to be a reality or not. We don't know because ultimately there's only a couple of people that are in control of that, Jerry and Stephen Jones. And since the Deion Sanders move where Stephen Jones literally picked up his dad and threw him against the wall for signing Dion. It seems like Jerry's been a bit gun shy about making big moves. So that you can look at and say correlates with the Cowboys, not getting back to the big dance, not taking the risks that Jerry Jones used to always do in his businesses. I would hope that, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want you to understand that not every free agent move ends up being a winner. You can literally go through the Washington commanders and look at the roadway littered with big free agent contracts from Albert Hainsworth to Adam Archuleta, you know, even prime time past this prime time and um, Alvin Harper's to go way back. But even some of the other ones that they have done in recent years, and very few of those have paid dividends. But here's the thing. The thing you have to look at is with the Cowboys is the one thing you can say they get right. And that is the draft and evaluating talent. If they put the same effort towards evaluating the free agents 
and understanding what guys fit your system. Because here's the thing. You can have a great player, but if they don't fit the skills and the need set that you have, it doesn't do you any good. You follow me? If your offense is evolving, okay, to a West Coast, then a Derrick Henry doesn't necessarily fit that type of running back. Not all offensive linemen are ground and pound and then zone blocking. They're different sets of skills. So if the Cowboys logistically look at the free agents and say, yeah, this guy's a great player over here, but he doesn't fit my system. In the same way they have gone through with lower tier free agents and make no mistake about it, they have done really well with discounted players. Of course, Donovan Wilson getting Malik Hooker after injury. J. Ron Curse, Hankins. They've gone through and found really good players. If they can sprinkle in finding those really good players and role players in free agency by getting a couple of blue chippers, it's all the difference in the world. And I think universally now, as much as everybody wants to blame Dak Prescott and say that he is just a garbage quarterback. I look at teams that made investments in great receivers, established receivers, and see how it paid dividend for their quarterback. Not all of them. Kenny Galladay did not help Daniel Jones. But you look at Tariq Hill, the cheetah, helping Tua. You know, if Tua can just keep from getting the concussions, they'll be in great shape. You can look at A.J. Brown helping Jalen Hurts, who this time last year, Eagle fans were questioning whether or not he was going to be the guy. Now, here's the problem for the Eagles, and they've been here before, is is the Jalen Hurts you saw this year the Jalen Hurts you're going to see every year? Because you got to pay him. They thought Carson Wentz was the Carson Wentz that they thought was going to be the perennial Pro Bowl, Super Bowl contending, you know, Hall of Fame pedigree, as Dan Orlovsky would say. And they paid him like that. Unfortunately, he wasn't it. Now, here is where we could be looking at 50 plus million dollars for Jalen Hurts. Now, here's a plan that Joe Banner puts out there for Jalen Hurts. Um, I'll get to that in just a second. But for the Cowboys, I don't know what they're going to do. The Cowboys talk the talk, and we'll see if they walk the walk this year in free agency. Let's listen to Rich Eisen's show. What do you think is in front of Howie Roseman right now? Yeah, I actually think this is the most interesting contract of all the ones we're out there. Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they, they and you're they, by the way, Burrow's in line, yep. and Herbert's in mm-hmm. line, yep. and I'm sure, you know, there'll be a, all eyes to see how much guaranteed from them. What do, what do you think? And this is this is why to me this is really interesting. I mean, the players should be fighting really hard for a short deal. All three of these guys, by yes. the way. Mm-hmm. And if I'm fee- if I'm uh, uh, hurts, I'm actually sitting back going to the Caribbean, let those other guys get their deals done, and then I'm coming in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping they did three or four-year deals, and I'm hoping they pushed the $50 million mark up into the 50 to $55 million range. Mm-hmm. And I don't see any way you can walk into the Eagles' offices and say, you know, I want the, what they got. I've accomplished a comparable amount. Mm-hmm. And how do they say no? Now, the Eagles are going to fight for a long-term deal. I mean, they're still employing many of the philosophies I did when I was there. The longer the deal, the better it is for the team. Of course. That's why I mean, Jerry wants a three-year longer. deal. They own his rights for four more years. The capital have gone up $100 million between now and then. I mean, that's almost 50%. Mm-hmm. So a guy making $50 million now is going to be a 75 to $80 million per year player in five years. So the Eagles are going to, the, every extra year they get is going to save them a massive amount of money, even if they give him a great deal right now. Mm. That highest paid guy right now is 50. Let's say they gave him 53, 54, 55, which would be a big jump at that level yes. from where we are right now. But let's say they get five years instead of four. That fifth year should be at 80 million bucks. Instead, it's going to be part of an average of 50. 
They're saving $30 million probably mm -hmm. for every extra year they get on that contract. By the way, the same will be true for Barrow and Herbert on all those guys. Mm -hmm. See, if I was an agent right now, we're presenting those guys, I wouldn't be fighting for the guarantee. I'm going to get a huge guarantee no matter what. Mm -hmm. I'm taking that huge guarantee, but I'm fighting like hell for a short deal. It's not going to take long for you to be sitting there with somebody like Hertz who maybe has gone to two Super Bowls by the time he's been in the league three or four years from now. So you think Mahomes is the last 10-year deal that we're going to see? I don't think we'll ever see that again. Mm. People forget Holmes did something, Mahomes did something, and I didn't even think at the time it was a terrible idea. It's turned out to be a terrible idea, and many people saw it at the time. His contract is really effectively fully guaranteed for 10 years. And at the time, he jumped the market by almost 20%. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, he jumped the market. It's going to take two, three, four years for the market to even catch up to where he is. And he's effectively got a 10-year fully guaranteed contract. He's going to make 500 million bucks. But what happened was the next deal worked off of his deal. So instead of it taking three or four years to catch the market up to the jump that he created, it took like one. Right. So by the time we get to the third or fourth year of his deal, it's a horrible deal. Unless he's getting $500 million to play in a place that he loves for a coach that he loves in a situation where yeah. they – they're they're in it every year and so flipping away back to what you said about Lamar sometimes you take what you take when you're in a spot that you love with a coach that you love and a spot where you can win right? right here's the question though for me is I think you could have had all of those things and done a five-year deal and then done another five-year deal mm -hmm. I mean it wasn't like Chiefs were going to fall out of love with him right and then he could have just protected himself against now yeah. when he did his deal it wasn't as obvious as now the cap was going to go up this much we thought the cap was going to go up more. we got teams opening in places like LA. We have new TV market deals coming along. But he jumped the market by 20%. So at least for a while, maybe he's kind of ahead of the game. And then the guarantees kind of cover maybe the shortfall of the last few years. But the market has blown past him so fast, it's just a terrible deal. So what else does Howie need to secure? What do you think? What else is on his plate here? Well, I, listen, Howie, you know, he believes what I stated earlier, and that's where he's going to start. He's going to try to lock down the quarterback, and he's going to try to solidify both of his lines. And he's going to go from there. And they're really in pretty good shape if you do those two things. They're going to have some, you know, slays turning older. You know, Bradbury is about to become a free agent. So they have some work to do, especially in the secondary. Right. But they've now won two Super Bowls with what I think is just a pretty good. Well, they've made two Super Bowls. Well, but, you know, sort of I know what you're, you might have <laughs> wished for, but not right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Right. But they did it with a secondary that most teams would not be playing in a Super Bowl with. Right. Because it dominant defensive line which uh -huh. was, you know which how he hit twice during the season as well with joseph and sue he hit it on he, yeah. he kept hitting it again and again the good thing with the season the good too. thing with the eagles and howie is you don't really have to work very hard to predict what they're going to do mm -hmm. i mean their their philosophy is mm -hmm. very very evident both how they play the game itself yes and how they build the team so it's one of the easier teams linked to predict what they're going to do He's going to acquire more additional defensive and offensive linemen until he feels like he's not only got dominant lines, yes. but he's got some depth in case something happened. Then he's going to go and do whatever's next. He needs a running back, but he'll get that in the middle of the draft, and he'll be fine with it. And he even likes the guy that they got. And they got to work on the secondary and the defense. They're going to lose a lot of players, but they're much closer to staying at the top than people realize, especially they, if Hurts plays. And like they clearly did. hit on the coach. They hit on the coach. Who would have thunk? <laughs> Who would have thunk? I gave him yeah, so one former Eagle executive believes that they're still going to be a juggernaut next year. But the lesson to take from this is, and, and this is true, that you didn't look at the secondary for the Eagles and say that they are Hall of Fame in much the same way you looked at the Giants back when they were winning Super Bowls. It was a dominant defensive line. It's, it, it's the defensive line and the offensive line, stupid. That's the biggest bang for your buck. You can have a great cornerback, but if you can't get pressure on the quarterback and you got garbage for the other guys, they'll just throw away from them. They just do. But if you've got a defensive line that can get up on the field and put pressure on that quarterback, it makes all of the levels that much better. You know, it's one of those things I've been saying forever, but, you know, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll from his mama's basement. Hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget, 5 o'clock today, we'll be doing our Zoom in call live stream. If you are one of my channel members, shout out to you. The link will be posted in the community tab to join us. We got a lot to talk about. We, we have dreams. We have dreams of having shiny new pieces 
on the Dallas Cowboys. As always, I appreciate you. Our folks here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Lewis Sports Report. 